Hey, you got to take your position. You know, this camera will be the master camera in the house. Hey, have you taken your... Uh, no master, everybody will record your own. Sorry. So are we ready? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Let's have the mic. Maybe I'll share it from here. Are you good to go? Take it to use your door. Man, Remove fish. your bank no, 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 no. Okay, Okay, no be you there. Okay. Let me uh, just restart. Yeah. Are we ready? Yep. So, let's go. Right. Um, you're welcome, sir. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. We do, I do appreciate your presence. So, um, judging from facts, um, you have become a legend, no doubt. And uh, fact has it that you started with the likes of Slow Dog and MC Loop. Presently, indigenous rap has gotten to an extent. Will you say you are satisfied? Yes, I would say I'm satisfied and they've done more than I even expected they were going to do. Um, now, everybody wants to do stuff in their mother tongues. So it's a struggle that some people started and today that's something you cannot do without. So I would say I'm very, very much um, impressed with what they are doing. I'm more than impressed and I know they will do more still. Very much. Um, so I quickly have one other question. That goes, um, you know, you actually promoted Mother Tongue, your style of music. It's, it's one such music that promotes Mother Tongue. So far, I want, we believe there have been possible challenges that you've encountered. So we want to know what those challenges are. Yeah, initially when I was doing it, there was no yardstick. Everybody were doing the English thing and more of Yoruba songs. Then when I started, it was something new. You know, I, I started rapping in Igbo, my mother tongue, Igbo language. And the challenges then, like a lot of people were trying to connect with it. And it was more like I was doing music for my Igbo brothers and sisters. Then at some point, it started cutting across and I started playing shows outside the Enugu where I grew up. Now, if I check, I won't really call that a challenge because it's like introducing something new. A lot of people are trying to like blend to it and I, I think I have more blessings to count than the challenges, uh, like you put it. But it's, it wasn't that easy, nothing good comes easy though. But I'm glad I did it when I did it and how far it has come to stay. Is something I look back and I smile and be like, yeah, I appreciate everybody that supported the struggle and the movement. Thank you very much. Um, you have been cool for time being. Presently, you have been cool. Uh, what should your fans be expecting from you? Well, the same old me um, in a new, how will I put it, clothing. Um, this app, I, 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 I've been quiet for a while. Yes, you don't expect me to always be noisy, you know? And the way I normally put it when I go for interviews, I always tell people, the, the people that were my fans, they were the undergraduates when I tasted film, then years back, and you don't still expect them to be in the clubhouses or be on social media is talking about music so at times you have to just accept the reality do do your thing though because there are lots of people that are actually waiting for that but you don't expect it to be the way it used to be because there are things that are not expected of me and right now i won't really say i was quiet but i think i got involved and in, in, i had more responsibilities to take care of and I got involved being a better man because I'm older than I used to be. So we learned that you are married. So how has marriage life affected your career? Um, positively, I don't really like talking about my private life. Yeah, I am married and I'm happy in my marriage and I'll keep it like that. But and me as an artist, so we talk music. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, you were known as Nigaro when you came on board. Yeah. I 
remember vividly I was one of your fans, even when I was not hearing what you were speaking. But I actually love your music. Um, not too long ago, I saw in the media you've changed your name from Miga Raw to Mr. Raw. So why did you change your name? I would say I tried to change because um, people like Andy Bello, the OAPs, the you know presenters, a lot of them were complaining that nigga sounds more like a swear word. So I thought about it for a while because they say affecting my online presence. Sometimes they don't want to talk about nigga on air and they end up censoring the nigga, replacing it with five stars. And it, it changes the name automatically from what you, you used to sell it and to uh, sell to people as a brand. So I thought about that you have materials, radio stations don't want to talk about it because they are not allowed to say nigger on air. They play my videos on MTV base, they remove the nigger raw, they just write raw and it started getting so confusing with the brand. These people watching me on other stations are seen raw, you listen to radio, you hear something else, you see my CD, it's nigger raw and stuff. So. But when I found out it started affecting my online presence, because I searched for my song. There was a time I, a friend was telling me he couldn't buy my song online. Then I checked, I typed my name, it didn't come up. And when I typed the title of the song, it showed some other options and my name popped up, but they, they already removed the nigger. So if you're looking for nigger, you won't see it till you look for raw or star 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 raw and all that stuff so i just felt like changing it so it's totally rebranding for myself as a musician and a businessman because it was affecting people outside like i said before i was doing music for my people people brothers i never knew i was going to cut across with that music thing so when i got to that stage saw the challenges i had to just yank off nigga from my name and replace it with mr since you started bearing the name Mr. Rod, that's the new identity now. Yes. So, what is the milestone, as in what has been the achievement? Is it based on your previous singles or something new has popped up? Along? Well, I would say even people are not accepting that till now. They still tell me, even sometimes you hear promoters, bros, I know where you're Mr. Rod, but I'll put nigger on my poster. You understand? That's what people know. Then, I remember my last album so far the marketer was like people come oh, on this guy look like negaro he comes to you know when negaro they say that's him i say but i did see mr Rowe, you know so the guy now had to like even change in in alaba he used negaro to promote the cd not mr Rowe. you understand so what he did was the cap um, i used in my album cover he wrote that negaro on it then write mr Rowe on my jacket so you can connect you know, the, the first one with the second one. So that's one of the biggest challenges because I started selling the brand that nigger raw. People accepted it. Now I'm trying to make them switch to Mr. Raw. So it's difficult for them. And like everybody keeps saying that the nigger raw sounds sweeter, you know, in their mouth. But it's about their lads now. It's not that sweet so when it comes to As businesses. Woman. Yes, when it comes to businesses, it's not that sweet. So I just have to do something about it. Joel, you still have questions? Yes. Will the present um, artist we have presently, um, who would you like to work with? It depends on what you mean by the I present mean, artist. Yeah. I'm talking about indigenous rappers. Where? In Nigeria? In Nigeria, or? precisely. Well, I'll work with the people I would like to work with. Yeah. Those are doing me proud. I've worked with them already. Okay, some time ago, eh, I read in one of these software magazines that you were not in good terms with this guy. What's his name? Fino. That you guys were having some kind of issues that about superiority. So I don't know if you will tell us something regards that accusation. Okay, I don't have any issues with Fino. And a lot of people cook up all sorts of things to sell their material, sell their magazines, sell their news. You understand? If I open up my phone now, I even spoke with him two days ago. He's in Cyprus now doing shows and stuff. So I am not, you know, he's like a brother to me. And 
a whole lot of them, the Easterners, we are all like, you know, one family. So if I'm having any issues with, you know, maybe it's Negaroy, because you might see Negaroy in the industry. <laughs> It's not myself, so I don't have any issues of, you know, concerning superiority. It's his time. I'm his fan. You understand? You don't expect me. When when I tasted film, people were in the industry. And I came and I enjoyed it. So why will I all of a sudden start dragging superiority with someone else I know that is doing incredibly well in this field? Have you done any collaboration with him? Yeah, I did a song with Fino titled Audio OK. I oh, dropped okay. early this year, yeah. So how's the single moving in the market? Yeah, the single is doing well. It's still doing well, and even though I have a new material, but it's doing well, and I'm working on dropping an album soon. So I won't just play around with my friends and then does do a lot of collabs and drop an album. Okay, let us take you back. Mm -hmm. I must ask you this, or else I will not forgive myself. Your first single, Obodo, the one you... Uh, what's his name again? This Clean comedian guy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. How did you get that inspiration? And when you were releasing the song as a single, did you ever expect is Nigerians are going to accept it the way they do? No. And the song that inspired me to write that song happens to be the late evangelist Sonny Okosun's song, which were Nigeria. Then in school, I know I remember if I do my rap, I'll use Sonny Okosun's chorus. Then I was not even planning to drop a single. I was just having fun in, in school as a young man growing up. Then when I decided to, when I got involved with a lot of competitions, 